name is Adriana Moreno. I'm Mariah Naya. I'm Emily Pedroza. And today we're going to be presenting our movement analysis on striking and soccer ball, looking specifically on our right leg. So first we're going to show you a video of the movement skill that we chose along with the phases. So the first phase that we're going to analyze is this phase is going to be the wind-up. The second phase is going to be contact on the ball or, or acceleration. And then we have phase three, which is our follow-through or deceleration phase. So for this project, we wanted to focus on a specific joint throughout the phases. Um, so for me, I had the acetabular femoral joint, also known as the hip joint. I had the tibial femoral joint, which is the knee joint. And then I had the talocrural joint, which is the ankle. So for the first phase, which is our wind-up or backswing, as we mentioned before, um, as you can see, the acetabular joint is in extension and slight external rotation. So from the anatomical position, we have the extension and then the slight external rotation. So for extension, it's going through the sagittal plane with the frontal axis, and the slight external rotation is having a, oh, it's going through the transverse plane with a vertical axis. Um, the muscles that are working for extension would be the hamstring muscles, so the bicep femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, along with the gluteus maximus. And for the external rotation, we have the gluteus maximus and external rotator. And these muscles would be agonists working concentrically. So for the first phase, I'm gonna be, again, I'm going to be talking about the tibial femoral joint, which is the knee joint. And the range of movement is in flexion. So when you're in anatomical position and then you come back or the wind up, you can see that the knee joint or the knee joint is in um, flexion. And then the plane of movement is going to be sagittal and it's going to have a frontal axis of movement. And then the muscles involved will be hamstring muscles, so it would be the group of hamstrings and muscles, and it would be the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and then separate from that is the popliteus, the gracilis, and the gastrocnemius, which is the calf muscle. And all those muscles play a role um, of agonist muscles, and they have a contraction type of concentric. Or concentric. And then the quad muscles, um, it includes the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and the vastus intermedius, and they all have a role of antagonist muscles, and they have a contraction type of passive. All right, for the talocrural joint, which is also known as the ankle, um, so this one is in plantar flexion, and it's gonna be going through the sagittal plane. Um, and basically all those posterior muscles on it, like the gastrocnemius or the calf, um, the flexor digitorum longus, flexor hallucis longus, the perionis, the plantaris, and then the soleus and medialis posterior. Um, all those are the posterior muscles flexing that ankle upward, um, all working as agonists and concentrically. So for the second phase, we have contact on ball or acceleration phase. So for the acetabular joint, again, now we're going into, so from the extension and ex slight external rotation, now we have flexion of the hip, slight internal rotation, as well as adduction. And for flexion, we're going through the sagittal plane with the frontal axis. For the slight internal rotation, we have a transverse plane with the vertical axis. And adduction, we're going through the frontal and sagittal axis. The muscles that are working during flexion would be the anterior muscles of the hip and a little bit of the quad, which would be the iliopus, rectus femoris, pectineus, septoris, and tensor fasciae latae. Sorry if I'm butchering the names. Um, and then for slight internal rotation, we have the gluteus medius and again, the tensor fasciae latae. And for adduction, we have the three adductors, which are the brevis, longus, and magnus, as well as the gracilis. And these muscles will again be working as agonist muscles, working
working concentrically. So again, for the second phase, I'm going to be talking about the tibial femoral joint. And the tip, so in the second phase, contact on the ball and acce or acceleration, it will now be extension when you have contact on the ball. So it kind of looks like almost this, but you're kind of slanted this way. And then the plane, the range of movement would again be extension. The plane of movement would be sagittal and it would have a frontal axis of movement. And the muscles working would be the quad muscles, so that includes the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and the vastus intermedius, and they all play a role of agonist muscles, and they have a contraction type of concentric. And then for the hamstring muscles, which include the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus, they all have a role of antagonist muscles, and they have a contraction type of passive. And then for that, the antagonist and the passive, it also includes the gastrocnemius. All right, so for that ankle joint, the talocrural, um, this one's a little bit different even though you can't really tell on the screen. Um, like it still looks like she's in plantar flexion, but she's actually going into dorsiflexion, which helps give her the power and then opens up like her foot to make contact with the ball. Um, and the dorsiflexion is all your anterior muscles, um, including the tibialis anterior, the phineas, teratitis, and the extensor digitorum longus and the extensor pallidus longus, um, all moving through the sagittal plane as she makes contact on the ball, um, all working as agonist concentrically. So for the last phase, we have the follow through or deceleration phase, and in this movement, we're gonna have the same movements as phase two, so flexion, slight internal rotation, as well as adduction. Um, and same plane and axis, however, the muscles will now be the antagonist muscles to get that deceleration from phase two to phase three. So the acetabular joint, like I said, flexion, slight internal rotation, and adduction, the muscles that will, that will be working here are the for flexion are the gluteus maximus, the bicep femoris, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. The slight internal rotation would be the gluteus maximus as well as the external rotators. And adduction would be the three glute muscles, which is the maximus, medius, and minimus, along with the tensor falsae and glottae. And these muscles are gonna have a role of antagonist muscles working eccentrically to get that deceleration. And for phase three, the tibial femoral joint, it will still have a range of movement of extension, and then the plane of movement would be sagittal still, and it would still have a frontal axis of movement. And the muscles working would be the hamstring muscles, again, which include the bicep femoris, the semitendinosus, the semimembranosus, and then separate from that is the gastrocnemius, which is the calf muscle. And those all have a role of antagonist muscles, and they have a contraction type of eccentric. And then the quad muscles, which include the rectus femoris, the vastus lateralis, the vastus medialis, and the vastus intermedius. And those all play a role of agonist muscles, and they have a contraction type of passive. All right, so for the deceleration phase of the ankle, um, she's actually in dorsiflexion, even though it looks like plantar flexion. Um, but all of her posterior muscles are actually working to decelerate her speed. So she's basically um, using the same ones that would normally do plantar flexion. So that's gonna be like the gastrocnemius, the flexor digitorum longus, flexor halicus longus, paranoius longus, paranus brevis, plantaris, plantaris soleus, and then the tibular posterior. Um, all those posterior muscles are working as antagonists um, working eccentrically, basically trying to slow down the force of her momentum from the leg. Um, so she's going into dorsiflexion back to neutral. Oh, so, okay, so we're gonna show the video one more time now that we explained all the joints and the movements involved at each joint. Okay, so that concludes our presentation. If there's any questions, leave it down in the comments down below.